Good morning, Believe Nation. Today we're gonna to talk about how to succeed on social media. And as always, as you're watching the video, if you hear something that really resonates with you, please leave it in the comments below, put quotes around it, so other people can be inspired, and when you write it down, you're much more likely to lock it in for yourself as well. Enjoy. The move that I have and the thing that I want to talk to you about today and the variable of the difference of the companies that win and lose and the reason big companies go out of business like Blockbuster and Woolworths and things of that nature is that the only thing I do is I market in the actual year we live in. What I'm concerned about when I look at the behavior online of 99% of this room, and when I say this room, let's throw everybody into it. The Fortune 500 companies I work with, all the startups, 99% of people are marketing like it's 2008, 2004, 2002, 1997, 1994. And that, my friends, is the disconnect. The reason most people are giving up dollars and aren't relevant is they're not storytelling in the year that we actually live in because that takes storytelling where people's attention is. The number one thing that connects every single person in this room is we're all battling for somebody's attention. Before you can tell me how great you are and how my life is gonna be so legit if I get into this or why it's so delicious or way healthier, before you tell me all that stuff, you need to get my attention. The internet is the gateway drug to one-on-one -on -one relationships. Let me say it again, because I know there's a lot of old school folks in here, and listen, I'm an old school folk. There's a lot of old school folks that say, yeah, this new stuff and it's sad and everybody's on their phone and this internet stuff, but we're a business that's built on one-on-one -on -one relationships. Let me tell you something. I've scaled the fuck out of one-on-one -on -one relationships with this thing right here. And if you do not understand that engagement online is the gateway to one-on-one -on -one relationships in our world today, you are missing the culture shift we're living in. I think by far the biggest tip I can give you is to post more frequently. Many brands assume they should only post once or twice a day on Facebook or Twitter, and, and I think that's just wrong. Uh, my Twitter account has like 75 to 80 posts per day. Google Plus has five, Facebook has five. Uh, so that's, you know, it's 80, 100 posts a day. And my assumption is that not everybody who's interested in my content is awake at the same time, and even if they are awake at the same time, they may have different consumption habits. Some people read in the morning, some people at lunch, some people at night. So, you know, yes, you will, when you post more and more, you'll get people complaining that you're posting too much, that you're a spammer, you know, blah, blah, blah. But uh, I can tell you, for example, with Twitter, um, I literally repeat my tweets three times, eight hours apart. And I track it with a bit.ly link, and I can tell you, the first time I tweet, I get X clicks, the second time I get X, and the third time I get X. So so you can either have X clicks or three X clicks, and you know, my attitude is, okay, so if some people are upset with that, that's just the cost of doing business. That you know, the, the goal of social media is not to not piss off anybody. The goal of social media is to create a very marketing and powerful platform. So that's my number one tip to brands using social media. To get a big following, you have to read every day. You know, I wake up in the morning personally and I read. I read inspiring things. I'll read some Emerson. I'll read some, a lot of philosophy about life. I'll read some narratives or biographies of people who inspire me. I get my mind in the morning, whether it's on poetry or philosophy or a po political figure, something that inspires me to, to be thinking in a bigger way. That's what I do every day. And I think it, your, your following ultimately comes from how big your thinking is. You know, if you're just micromanaging and, and living in one little world, as much as they want to teach you to be a niche marketer, no, we want you to be a thought leader. There's a big difference. Are you a niche marketer or are you a thought leader? 
And I choose thought leadership, and I think it's valuable. I think it's important for you to be broadening your own mindset, your own philosophy about life or business or career or whatever it is your topic is, and be broadening that by reading more in that area because reading more will make you more creative. And you already know, you know, readers are leaders, leaders are readers. And so you, you gotta be reading things that digest uh, you know, in, in your mind that, that all of suddenly will come out in a creative thought or a creative act. And it's those creative thoughts and acts get you followed online. The real funny thing to me in the world right now is that everybody's full of shit, right? And, and what I mean by that is when you look at people tweeting or Facebooking, they're trying to disguise their ask by being witty. Right? Meanwhile, the one thing I know more than anything is that our collective bullshit radars today compared to 15 years ago are dramatically better. And the kids, f- their bullshit radars are excelling. They just, like, they just know it, right? So what I've been testing a lot of and believe a lot of value in is jab, 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 right hook. Give people value and funny stories. Give them an animated gift that just makes them laugh, right? That just makes, say happy Monday. It's fine. You don't need a business objective for every piece of creative. Because we live in a world now where it's not just about campaigns where you do two or three of them and you spend all your money. You live in a world where we're doing it every day, a lot of it. And so we have the freedom, the creative freedom, to actually act human and bring a little value to them. Bring value, bring value, bring value. Respond, engage, bring value, make it funny, make it newsworthy. And then, Let's all become grown-ups once and for all and recognize we can ask for the business if we're just authentic about it. A funny thing happens when you give a f- load of value up front. You guilt people into buying shit. <laughs> and so like, give value, give value, act human, do the right thing, answer, be there for them, have good, everybody on like, Twitter, everybody thinks you have to be funny on Twitter. Like, funny is like the one characteristic that works up. Everything works on Twitter, it's a human platform, but the problem is most people don't want to be self-deprecating or, or have empathy or, or be kind. Like it's, there's not that many and nobody wants to put it out there. They think they want to put out something that gets retweeted. How about we listen instead of talk? People like that. Think about the friend that you would rather call instead of the friend that always calls you and then think about who you want to hang out with, right? And so we have to act human, we have to bring value and then you say value, value, value and then you say, I'm my book. Right? And that's kind of the science. You know, boxing is known as a sweet science. That's why I use this metaphor for the title. It's how I think. I'm spending all my time and energy, and I highly recommend whatever energy you're spending on this, you spend more because the attention, the eyes, the ears of our consumers, they're clearly going in these places. They're clearly going in these places. And if we do not figure out the art and the science of how to actually storytell in them, not use them as just distribution. Realize how stupid it is to use the same picture on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr. Realize that. Understand there's a real science in this, a real storytelling battle going on right now in these platforms, and understanding that you as an individual act differently when you go into a boardroom in a business meeting than you would when you go with your girls to Las Vegas for the weekend, than when you would when you go out with your boyfriend. You're still the same person, but the context of the room changes is the way you storytell. I think that there are a, a few things to look at when you're trying to master, say, social media. Uh, and that is that social media is, in fact, very, very broad, and you should be specific and choose one or two tools to focus on. And the, by that, I mean, if you have a toolkit, if you want to be a good carpenter, you focus on one tool at a time. And similarly, I wouldn't try to become an expert at Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Tumblr, WordPress, all simultaneously. Choose one dependent on the format where you feel most effective and that you enjoy, because you'll need that enthusiasm to fuel you through all the learning curve, and then focus on that. In my particular case, I used the blog, which was WordPress-based, and I focused on typically 500 to 1,500 word pieces, developed that as my heartbeat. This is a very important concept. That was my, my grand central station, and if I did anything on, say, Facebook or Twitter, it either was to to broadcast things I found of interest or value to my readers, or to bring them to content that was on the blog. And that was the center of the heartbeat. So focus on one thing at a time. And I think in life, as in social media, you can have it all, you just can't have it all at the same time. Primary lesson that's hard for me to get into people's brains who want to learn about business or improving their financial situation is you go straight to the top. What most people do is they find a friend. Like if you want to grow your Instagram, you find a friend Uh, who has a thousand more Instagram followers and you're like, oh, let me get a tip from them. Forget that, go straight to the top. Who has the most? Taylor Swift has 
50.7 million Insta followers. It takes the same amount of time and day to learn from Taylor Swift's Instagram as it does, you know, from your brothers or your uncles or something like that. And I think the reason, and this applies not just it, to growing your social media following. Uh, I'll talk about that in a second. Some things that I've learned to grow social following, but um, this applies to all areas in life. You want to learn how to play basketball? Go watch old Michael Jordan videos. You want to learn how to lift weights? Go watch some old Arnold Schwarzenegger stuff, some Lee Haney stuff. You want to learn to be healthy? Find somebody who's a you know supermodel or something. I got a friend. He's one of the top male models in the world. The dude has like an eight pack. Hang out with him. You go straight to the top. Don't be intimidated and don't sell yourself short. Uh, back to the subject of growing a social media following. To me, nowadays, it's all about a couple things. It's all about lifestyle marketing uh, and lifestyle growth. You know, people want, people ask me, Ty, you got this big house. Like, why don't you, can't you afford a selfie stick or a tripod? Well, I actually do have a tripod right there, but uh, a lot of things, people engage better. I've tested it. People want to know. It's like having a face to face conversation. So make sure your social media is not too stiff and stuffy, you know? Make sure, like the Office TV show, some of you saw, um, I know Dwight Schrute, Rain Wilson, he was here at the house, I don't know, a week or two ago, and we were talking about how the Office, they would use these cameras, which made it feel like you were in the actual office with Steve Carell and, and you know, Dwight Schrute and all these funny guys, and so it upped their ratings. It was, they did 202 episodes. So whether it's TV, whether it's Instagram, even your video, uh, even your entrepreneurial growth can be fueled by this reality slash lifestyle branding. So, I mean, you know, I got YouTube videos that have done a lot of views, 60 million views that were done like this. And how was that? Uh, how did I kind of come to that realization? Well, it was by following people straight to the top. Even if you look at a lot of these big people, whether it's... Uh, you know, Taylor Swift or, or Ariana Grande has a big following. And you look at the engagement of which pictures and which videos get the most engagement on their social, You that's information gathering sessions. You sit there and you stare at it and you're like, wait a sec, that picture that's all formal with the photographer and is all stiff, that one got, you know, 50,000 likes. And this one where it's just like her, like with a camera going like, what's up? That one did 75,000. Boom, clue reveal. Clue reveals the answer right there to you. So. So I have a couple quick thoughts on social media that I wanted to share and how to have success. Number one is you have to define your outcome. It's important to know what you want out of this. Are you trying to build a personal brand? Are you trying to sell your product or service? Are you trying to just have a form of escape just to get away from your busy life and you want to connect with your friends. Understanding why you're on the platform will help you devise a strategy to win. Number two is find your voice. It's really important that you understand that there is nobody else like you. There's a lot of other people out there, they have their own opinions, their own voices, but you're not gonna succeed by just being a copy of somebody else. Your ultimate success will come by you finding your own voice and putting out content that you resonate with that other people aren't saying those exact same things. And so at the beginning, this is hard. At the beginning, you don't know what your voice is. At the beginning, you're still trying to figure it all out. And so I think it's actually okay to copy people at the start. It's okay to copy somebody's style of making videos or making tweets or making Instagram pictures. It's okay to copy. And in that process, you learn about yourself. You need to understand though that your ultimate success won't come by copying somebody else. You will never be massively successful by just being a junior version of somebody else. So a lot of people copy my video styles as an example. They'll make their own top 10 rules or their own versions of what I'm doing. And it's okay, it doesn't bother me. They're never going to have the success that I'm having if they're just copying me. But what it allows you to do by copying those people is then see, hmm, I like that. I like what Evan's doing. I like what Gary's doing. I like what Jimmy is doing. I like what Susan is doing. But I want to twist it up a little bit. That's where you're gonna have success. Where you take what is working for somebody else and then you twist it and add some flavor to it that only you can add. Because you can never out Evan Evan and I can never out you you. So go be you. That's how you're gonna win. You need to find your voice. And number three is be prolific. It's important that if you are trying to achieve a real outcome, if you're trying to build a brand, you're trying to sell product, that you are prolific in the creation of the content. 
you're not gonna get really great at it if you're doing something once a week. You're just not gonna get really good at it. Try learning anything once a week without practicing in between, you're never gonna get really good at it. If you're trying to pick up salsa dancing or you wanna learn Spanish or you wanna play the piano, if you're only doing it once a week, you're never gonna get really, really, really good at it. You need to be more prolific. The quantity leads to the quality. The practice leads to you getting good at something. And so back to number one, if you have a goal, if you have a business objective and this is important to you, that you have success with it, then you need to dedicate time for you to learn it, to get good at it, to practice, to practice, to practice, to be prolific so that you can find your voice and create content that really touches people. So those are my thoughts on social media. Those are some of the thoughts of the experts in the field. I made this video because Siddharth Reaper asked me to. So if there's a topic you'd like me to cover in the next edition of Believe Life, leave it down in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I'm also curious to figure out what did you like most about this video? What lesson are you going to immediately apply to your life, to your business after watching this? And why are you on social? What, are, what is your outcome? What is your objective? Are you doing it for personal development to try to learn? Are you trying to build a brand and sell product? Is it just an escape from your busy life and you want to be entertained? Super curious to figure that out. Leave in the comments. I'm going to join in the discussion. I also want to give a quick shout out to Neil Marley. Thank you so much for picking up a copy of my book, Your One Word, and posting that review on your Facebook page. I really, really, really appreciate it. And I hope that it's had a good impact on your life. So thank you guys so much for watching. I believe in you. I hope you continue to believe in yourself and whatever your one word is. Much love, have an amazing day, I'll see you soon. You're gonna have people around you in your organization and or you're gonna get emails back saying, oh, this doesn't work or this is a waste of time, okay? You're also gonna have people tell you back off, okay? This is not wanted or don't spam me or you sent me the wrong, I don't need this, why'd you send this to me? This is exactly what happens to all people that are trying to get attention. When you get attention at the right level, the first thing that's gonna to happen to you is you're gonna get criticism. You wanna push through the criticism until you get admiration. You wanna push through more. It's not any different. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, social media is no different than me knocking on a door saying, hey, I wanna sell you a product. You're gonna have people slam the door in your face. The next place you go do, they're gonna say, get out of my neighborhood, what are you doing here? If you stop because of this suppression, this stop on you, if you stop because people are asking you to stop, you're done. So the same thing happens with social media. Look, when you tweet or when you put an entry into Facebook, the way to take that and make it unique, okay, and not spammy, and not bother people is to personalize it. So consider the people that you've been trying to sell products to, not just your friends. Let's say there was a plumber you're trying to sell a truck to. You would wanna email the plumber and say, Mr. Plumber, I just got a hold of a site of a sales trainer that can increase your sales at your business, Mr. Plumber and I wanted to make sure you had the information there. I thought of you when I saw this, and by the way, I could win $10,000, and so could any, any of your employees, as well as getting hooked up with a guy that can increase your sales in this economy, and I thought of you. So you gotta personalize it so that it's not spammy. You can't just keep using that one message we sent you yesterday, which was, I can uh, win $10,000, and so can you. Look, that's spammy. That's why people are saying it's spammy. You have to personalize it. Do this with heart. You can't survive doing this if your art isn't real, if your heart isn't in the work, because you won't get up in the morning and be motivated for it. You, you won't be excited about it. You have to have, at the base of all that you're posting, if, if people can tell that you care, you'll be followed. If people can tell that you care about values and, and humanity and the philosophy of living a good life and taking care of other people, respecting other people, you'll be followed. You could become a caustic hater and maybe you'll get, gather a couple people, but you're never gonna get millions of people. And if you do, you'll burn out your soul because nobody wants to live a life where they're just criticizing and being a jerk. Be the positive thought leader in whatever you do. Be the most caring, be the most consistent, be the person who shows up. And if you'll just show up every day with the intention to capture one unique moment, one unique lesson, one unique story, one unique quote, one unique picture, one unique video, whatever it is for you and your favorite medium, capture one thing every single day. You'll be fully energized with your life because life won't just be work anymore, it's art.